Hey guys, we got a nice uh, good old-fashioned March snowstorm going on out there. Thought I'd throw together square ground grinding, square ground chain with a grinder. Let's go over a few of the components, all right? The stone. There's a couple of different materials out there. Everybody seems to have their preference. I've been happy with these salmon stones. They work good for me. But heads up is that when you buy them, they're going to come with a square edge. So you need to put it on the grinder and then dress it up. So I'll post a picture of what I mean by the new and then what we mean by dressed up. You need to shape it. Once it's shaped, okay, that basically doesn't change. You just need to keep it clean. So how we're doing that, let me, I'm going to throw in here a video on just using the dressers on the grinder. Remembering that when you dress one side, right, it's going to say you're dressing the top plate surface, that's going to thin the side plate side of your, of your cutter. Same, go in reverse. If you dress just the edge, which is your side plate surface, that's gonna widen that, so you wanna dress your top plate. There's always that keeping things just right. If there's anything, you know, that's a common denominator with square grinding chain, grinding or filing, if you're watching this video, I'm hoping you've already, uh, you already appreciate this. This is a precision deal. Okay, it's not a close enoughness thing. Round filing, everybody's got their twist and their curves and whatever. That's fine. Works good for that. Square grind, it's got to be right. Okay, on your dressers, quickly. There's a couple of bolts, right? You can you, you set those dressers where you want them. Shaping the stone. Okay, here's where I deviate a little bit from the factory. On a factory chain, they grind their side plates 90 degrees to the bar. I tip it 5 degrees forward. Not 15, not 10, not 3, 5 degrees forward. Remember, the tooth, when it makes contact to the log, it tips backwards. So you want to have a side plate that's leaning forward so that when the tooth tips backwards, your side cutter is cutting that fiber off on a 90 degree angle. I think I have seen, this is one of the little subtleties that's missed. And I think the reason is, is a little bit of an optical illusion here. Because of the top plate leaning down, when we give a chain a quick glance, that side plate can actually look 90 degrees to the top plate, which means, right, it would be leaning slightly backwards. So I'll post, you know, two pictures here. I use a carpenter square, put it right on your saw bar, and then your eye has something to compare that to, set that five degrees forward. And again, both of your dressers, once you get that where you want it, they're set, and all you do is keep your, keep your stone clean. So I'd like to address a little more in detail this idea of dressing the stone. This is one of the dressers here, and around on the back, we have another one there. So this one here is doing the, um, what would be the side plate of the tooth. The other one's doing the top plate. And how these are adjusted, we loosen that bolt, and that whole little unit there will tip. And you'll do a little experimenting with it if you're setting up a grinder for the first time to get that side plate angle and top plate angle where you want it. Once it's set, that's tightened up and that really doesn't change. All you do is as you're dressing the stone up, you're just turning this in slightly with the grinder running and just dusting your stone to keep it clean. And I'm hoping to show you here, we're looking at the end, right? The, looking at a stone and it's been shaped so this idea of this here, right, this is the top plate, and that's the side. Right there, getting back in focus, here we go. So changing that slight little angle of the dresser 
we might shave off and make this slightly this way and that's going to change your side plate you can see there and then when you change your top dresser you're going to be changing this slope here that's going to be your top plate angle you know I talked a lot about the side plate angle being that five degree forward and then your top plate angle that's pretty much on 15 degrees which is it looks at first glance it's more blunt and it is than your round file the round files being back there at 25 to 30 degrees. Square ground, top plates around 15 degrees. So here, the stone is already shaped and I'm simply keeping it clean. So as I sweep that dresser back and forth, you can hear it just touching it. And then, you know, a sixteenth of a turn, it doesn't take much. And you'll start to hear that a little bit more, right? And then it's um, just, just go what you need because obviously it's taken away from your stone. Remembering that when you do one side, you need to do the other. I want to throw a quick comment in on the style of grinders. Okay, it, You can't take a round grinder and change it into a square grinding grinder. It doesn't work. You need a square grinding system. I'm fortunate in that I've got the old SDM4 grinder. They don't make them anymore. Um, these things work really nice. What I'm hearing is the Symingtons seem to be the go-to. The issue is kind of piling on this needs to be precise kind of grind. I'll show you here with this, and I am not familiar with the Symington, but I believe they're using the same principle. Is it right in here when I advance the tooth to the stone, there's a spring-loaded thumb that comes down and it clamps that tooth absolutely rock solid. You cannot move it. Then, once I get the tooth up to the stone and gets to that contact point, I am moving the tooth with two little screws here. One moves the tooth forward and back, the other left and right. And that's what I'm doing as I'm advancing the tooth to the stone and making contact. I want to mention the importance of good lighting. I mentioned this on another video on round grinding. It's the same principle. If we could think of this two by four, right? Inch and a half, um, Thickness. Think of this as your cutting edges that have become wood dull. You run the chain until you're saying oh, it's time to swap your chain out. Okay, so we have what we think of as a an edge that needs sharpening. When I have the lighting, right, coming from the back of the tooth, you can see this wide shadow line. That's one of the things that I'm looking at. So if I had sharpened this tooth, and now I have a much sharper edge, right? It doesn't go to zero, but it gets much, much thinner. It's basically what I'm looking at is the thickness of the chrome on the top. So that there, you can see the difference is I'm looking at that shadow line. And once you've gotten to that chrome, you're done. There's no point in, in continuing grinding. Um, it's as sharp as you're going to get it. So another piece to the puzzle, you probably noticed. The glasses. These I find work really nice. It's going to, they're really magnifying glasses. So it's going to make it much larger, clearer than just reading glasses. If you can do it with reading glasses, more power to you. But these, these here are really nice. Now I want to get into actually making contact tooth to stone. When I just mentioned this shadow line idea, that's primarily on the side plate. On the top plate, you tend to get a little bit of flaking. So again, understanding how tooth is, a tooth is made, we've got soft metal, and then we have, and I use that piece of uh, duct tape, right? That represents the chrome on the tooth. As that edge becomes sharp, what I see is just an ever tiny little bit of flaking 
of that chrome on the top edge. And then, you know, I'm done. On the side, it's going to be basically at the same time. You'll see that little shadow line that I mentioned. And because of the way the stone is striking the tooth, it tends to clean that side plate right off nice and clean. And it gives you that little bit of flaking across the top plate. So we've covered the stone, keeping that clean, setting your angles. The idea of that grinder, you know, that tooth holding that still. What I'm looking for when that tooth is sharp. Now we get into the, uh, the real, um, the voodoo of bringing that line to the corner. And I'll try to show you in the light, if I can in the light, I just put that blue line, right? And if you've shown, you know, if you've been interested in square ground, you've heard a lot of this line corner to corner thing. That's true. I work with it with a very, very subtle little below the corner. And when I say subtle, I'm talking, you could almost call it microscopic. Okay, I've, I've been thinking about how to explain this. If you look on my chain and look on the side plates, you're not going to see what is known as a bird's beak. Okay, I don't want to have a bird's beak so I've got that line too low. When you start having what we call a bird's beak on the side plate, your, your working corner is just not going to hold up. It will cut wood, okay, but it's not going to cut wood, you know, like square ground should, nice and smooth with a good long duration of holding that cutting edge. My theory is if you bring that line absolutely right to that corner, then when you start cutting, the cutting edges, they do lose their edge, right? It's just, I call it wood dull, it happens. So if you start on that absolute corner, then the wood dull effect starts to take your working corner away. If I start with that ever, ever so slightly below this corner, then when that tiniest of little edge kind of gets peened back fairly quickly, you know, within five, 10 minutes of cutting your average kind of wood, as long as it's clean, okay? I'll be left with what I think of as a good, strong working corner that's going to keep doing its job. It's going to keep grabbing that fiber. That's its job. It needs to get engaged into that wood fiber. I'm hoping you follow that. I'm not talking about putting a bird's beak on it. That's too much. If you find that you're going right onto that corner, if this is something you're, you're trying, I would just suggest see if you can get it ever so slightly under it without seeing it from the side of the tooth. And I can't do that without these guys here. Okay, it is a very subtle little thing. Square ground chain, you know, it's, it's one of those things that once you get it into that real sweet spot, it's really hard to work, you know, work with a saw that's anything less than, um, you know, 100%. And I find that little subtlety, five degrees forward, and then there's a few other modifications I do. I was thinking I'll make an, another video on modifying the chain to get a little more speed out of it. But for now, five degrees forward and that ever so slight under that corner. So I'm just throwing in a quick clip here of showing you this up to speed, sort of, this would be no hurry, but I have a chain that's lost its edge to, you know, I've lost about 20% of that cutting speed and I'm going to be touching them up.
So that's what I mean by, that's kind of my grinding speed. Um, the other thing I would comment on is you, it's a very light touch, really round file on the saw, right? You're not hogging into it and bending the file, you're just touching it. And that's really all we're doing with the grinder. I kind of, you'll you, uh, hear that grind just tapping it back and forth, very slight, and then on to the next tooth. I'm running 18 inch, 16 and 18 inch chains, semi skip. So I've timed it over the years. I'm around three minutes, three to four minutes uh, per loop, and that's not in being in, in any hurry. Okay, as the stone gets used, that dressing, right, you're actually taking um, material away from it. It's going to get smaller diameter. Different grinders have different ways of making that little adjustment. You want to have your tooth contact point right here at what I call 430. So just take a square, mark your nine and your six o'clock, find halfway around, right in there. And then as your stone gets used, you, got, you need to make that little adjustment. So make your contact point, keep your contact point at that 430 mark. And you just think it through, if that gets way out of whack, your tack angle on your side plate is going to get, start getting very blunt. And chain speed, right? Side of the plate, your side plate, excuse me, side plate of the tooth, that's got to cut that fiber. You want to pay attention to that. Just as in hand filing, round grinding, square grinding, we want to know when it's time to swap chains out. That question comes up all the time. When should I stop and sharpen? Whatever the system you are using for sharpening. I've tried to answer the question this way. If you're using a chain that you think is 100%, tag that in your mind as a 10. Say, that's, that's as sharp as I've ever had a chain cut. I like that. As we're cutting wood, pay attention to that cutting performance, that efficiency. I don't like to get any lower than losing 30%. 20% between that 20 and 30% zone if I'm starting to lose, I feel like I'm losing about 30% of that cutting speed, right? I'm dropping into that eight, or you know, seven and eight, then it's time to swap your chain out, get out your file, touch, your, touch the chain up. If you start pushing it further than that, okay, then you're really starting to dull the chain into the point where you've got to repair the teeth before you sharpen it. So to steal a phrase that I love, from another instructor that uh, kind of piles onto the same point. You want to think about, you, want, you don't want to be filing or grinding your chain to sharpen it. You want to be filing or grinding it to keep it sharp. And that's very quick, right? Try not to lose any more than that uh, 20 to 30% of that cutting speed. I hope that helps. Um, apologize for a little bit of choppiness here, putting this together. There's all of these little details and I mentioned earlier, details with square ground chain. Details is where it's at. It's um, once you've run square ground, it's sharpened properly. Tough to go back to round file. It's, uh, you just can't beat it. But you do need a good grinder and you need to have that precisionness mindset on uh, keeping it sharp. Best of luck to you. Glad to answer any questions and I hope to see you in the woods sometime.